only 38% of Kampala's 1,200-kilometer road is tarmacked. This even as the city's population continues to rise, as well as demands on its roads. Now, as part of efforts to improve the state of the city's roads, the five divisions of Kampala today each received a tractor and road compactor. Is that the magic bullet for Kampala on Tech 5 tonight? The KCCA Director of Engineering, Andrew Chitaka, takes your questions on the city's state of roads and drainage. Engineer Andrew Chitaka, you're welcome to NTV tonight. You're on Tech 5. Thank you. This is entirely a session where you answer questions from our viewers who okay. uh, have replied to our uh, Tech 5 on Facebook and Twitter. And from Twitter, we'll start with Ego Morris. Uh, he asks, there has been a lot of shoddy work on roads. How is KCCA ensuring that they get value for money from road contractors? Uh, thank you. Um, KCCA is very serious on the contractors that we employ. And uh, of recent, we've had to uh, terminate quite a number of contracts for shoddy work. So we are being very serious on this particular issue to ensure that we get value for money from the little money that we have. So we have put very stringent measures in the procurement process to weed out the bad contractors. And we are also supervising them very strictly. Okay. Secondly, we are trying our level best to entice the good contractors to come and work with us because previously they had run away from us, from KCC, as you know, and now they are starting to come back, given the good systems that we have put in place. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Duncan on Demo still mm -hmm. on Twitter, he asks, why don't you deal with telecom service providers that are messing up roads, digging everywhere, and they do not restore them? We have actually tackled this issue, and we recently had a meeting of all utility companies, not only telecom, even power and water. We have been engaging them to find uh, better ways of doing their work without uh, giving the burden to KCCA. And we are coming up with solutions in this regard. We have told these companies to start sharing infrastructure. For example, telephone companies. There's no reason why one would have to dig where another company already has empty ducts, for example. I can give you the example of the <coughs> masts. Sometime back, every phone company would put up its own mast. But they soon realized that this was too expensive. Well, it's a very expensive world doing business. Mm -hmm. So they sold their masts to some two companies. And now any company can put up its transmitter on these companies, so on, on these uh, masts. Mm -hmm. So we are telling them that, look, if you already have capacity in the ground, which can accommodate new cables, why does another company have to come up and dig? And they're actually buying the idea. Mm. So we are soon coming up with very good solutions in this area. Okay. We are also drafting conditions under which we can allow them to, to dig if okay. they must. Does this include consulting with you before the digging starts? Yes, exactly. Already they are consulting with us. And in all the permits that we issue, we list the conditions that they must follow. Compliance hasn't been very good, especially because we are also thin on the ground. Okay. But uh, everyone is now turning around and realizing the damage that is being done to our roads, and they are now willing to cooperate. Okay. Yeah. And does this include national water and sewerage cooperation? Because they are part of the lot that does the digging. Yes, uh, this so includes national water. Okay. And um, the trouble with national water is that they have infrastructure already in the ground, which is aging. And in so many cases, when pipes burst, mm. you have no alternative other than allowing them to dig and repair. Otherwise they do repair. They are yes, supposed to repair. They do repair. Okay. But uh, okay. if you leave it the way it is, the longer it stays, mm. the more damage it does to the road. Okay. Yeah. Engineer, let's go to some other questions from Facebook. Mm. Bait mm. Awobra, you say, you're the first head in planning. How comes more establishments uh, constructed on road reserves and you look on? Well, um, actually, we have a problem in Kampala in that, not only Kampala, actually, all over the country. Mm -hmm. We have a problem of road reserves. In many cases, we talk about road reserves, which have actually never been acquired by government. You find that people have land titles mm. which stretch up to the edge of the road. So they're privately owned. Yes, mm. so they're privately owned. And we assume that 
50 meters from the center of the road is a road reserve. Mm. Yet we actually have to acquire the reserves. So we have to systematically go out and start a deliberate process of acquiring road corridors. And uh, we have already made plans for this starting next financial year. Next financial yes, year. Yes, we have to start acquiring these road. Oh, road okay. Results, yeah. All right. Uh, Roland Moses still on mm -hmm. Facebook. You say hello and thanks for the good work. But what are you doing about the roads that are so small, thus causing a lot of traffic jam and the population is also increasing. Everybody's in a hurry. And mm -hmm. uh, to, to throw in another uh, uh, related question to, to, Roland's, uh, to Roland's, there is the issue of the bus lanes. Now, today mm -hmm. we saw Utoda wants to bring in more buses. KCC, what are you going to do about uh, bigger road lanes to uh, support the ever-increasing traffic, both uh, vehicle and, uh, and human? Um, actually, this is a very big issue. There's no magic bullet to, to solve this matter. But um, so far, we have plans to revamp our infrastructure, the road infrastructure. We are starting with the money that we are getting from Treasury. Mm. And every financial year, we have earmarked some roads for upgrading and widening. We have also got some uh, substantial commitment from the World Bank, which is going to give us uh, up to $200 million to improve infrastructure in Kampala. Mm -hmm. And we are going to look at the most congested corridors and increase their capacities. Mm. So we think that this will go a long way in alleviating congestion. Mm -hmm. But I must tell you that uh, road building alone cannot solve congestion. Because even in countries with the best road networks, they still have congestion. So it has to be a package of interventions that will sort out the congestion issue. How about the For drainage, Engineer Chitaka? Um, drainage, yes. Kampala's drainage systems are currently under capacity. Anything you're but, doing about that? Yes, by the time they were built, they could serve. But as you know, as more and more land gets built up, okay. you create more hard surfaces, no more infiltration of water, mm -hmm. and that means that what you, what you had before is no longer adequate. Mm -hmm. So we have a plan for them as well, uh, through government financing and development partners. We have uh, devised a plan to review the drainage master plan that was prepared some time back in okay. around uh, 2003. Okay. And we shall address that as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Away from this engineer, we saw a story uh, sh uh, just uh, uh, minutes ago on mm -hmm. the levy on taxes. Now, court uh, took these fares away, and you people are reinstating it. The minister said it's legal. Where's the balance? Um, we actually think that uh, it is it is proper to levy charges on public transport operators. There is nowhere in the world where uh, you know, vehicles uh, that are getting revenue uh, are not charged at all. Mm -hmm. We think that um, we should levy charges on these public transport operators uh, because they're actually using the facilities that we have in the city. They're using the roads. Okay. And we spend money to maintain the roads. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Engineer Andrew Chitaka, the KCC Director mm -hmm. of Engineering, who has been our guest on Tech Five this Monday evening.